Hey guys, I want to share with you some different little maggot tricks that I've been using to do local PR review. Also, another thing that's been really helpful for getting prepared for releases and also generating my own pull requests. If I am introducing potentially breaking changes, I like to know what those incompatibilities are and include that in the description of the pull request. So I've actually been using Go Release, which is one of the experimental tools from the Go team. It allows module authors to avoid common problems before releasing a new version of a module. So let me show you quickly what that looks like. And then I'll show you some different ways that I'm locally reviewing people's pull requests or even like just comparing feature branches to master. All right, so this is what Go Release looks like. So Go Release only works if all of your changes have been committed on that branch. So if you have like uncommitted changes, it's gonna just give you a warning and say like, hey, yo, can't run, uh, need you to commit those. And once you do that, you can actually see it gives you compatible changes and incompatible changes. So these are only gonna be for like API changes. So like exported functions, public, public um, visibility functions and fields. So you can see kind of like, yeah, what's changed, what's been added, what's been removed. And this makes it way, way, way easier for when you're generating your release notes. Another really nice thing is it'll also give you like a suggested version if you're using um, the, the semantic versioning here. So that's always kind of nice, you know? If I was on V1 and I had these breaking changes, it would probably suggest that I change the major version. So super cool. I've been loving Go Release. For any of my gophers out there, I'm sure that you will appreciate that. All right, let's look at Maggot. So there's a couple of ways that I use Maggot to review changes locally. Part of the reason why I really like it is I do find it a lot easier to kind of navigate the code and like see what things are doing when I'm in my editor. I, it's easy for me to go to definition and, and all of those things. GitHub has made a lot of effort to kind of make that easier in the web interface. But that being said, I just still don't think that it, it's not as comfortable as when I'm in my own editor, I gotta say. There's a couple ways that I can do it. So let's say I'm on a feature branch. This is my feature branch for Bubbles right now. One way that I can do this is I can do uh, maggot diff range, and then I'm just gonna choose like master, for example. And it's gonna tell me actually like how many files were changed, how many insertions, how many deletions, like full overview of all of the, the changes in the Git history. One thing that's really great here is not only am I seeing all of this, like it's in my editor. So if there are changes that I wanna make to this, and I'm like, yeah, no, you know, this part not, not sitting right with me. I can just hit enter and then I'm there in my editor and I can just like change things, right? And then and then change that and then I can go to Maggot and then see what my, what my staged and unstaged changes are, stage it and then like push that to the pull request. Like it's so, so easy for me to, to make these changes now. So yeah, highly recommend. So that is the ranged diff for Maggot. That one's really good. And this is showing changes from master to working tree. I've gotten into the git work trees rabbit hole recently. They're really, really nice. Um, let me side tangent here for a minute. I would say it's most similar to if you were to clone a repo and have it, you know, it, that, at that point, it's kind of living in its own directory and whatever. What git work trees do is it allows you to have a different directory that's dedicated to a branch that is not already checked out. So you choose like the name of this new directory and where you want to like clone clone the repo and what source branch you want it to be checked out. And what's nice about the work trees is that you can't have the same branch checked out in multiple work trees. So this is great because like I was working on a project earlier in the summer and I had it in two different states, like I had cloned it to have it in two different states because there was one like super whip branch and and one uh, more stable, like I was either looking at PRs or like on master or whatever on that other one. And I'd made all these changes and then like down the line, I was like, wait, I haven't touched this in a little while. I recall making these changes, but then I actually like, couldn't find which, uh, what directory it was in. Yeah, it was, it was a bit of a pain, but now work trees have made that a lot easier for me because I'm able to just like check out, I can do get work tree list and it'll let me know all of the work trees that exist here. Let me show you what that would look like. So literally if I do work, get work tree list, you can see that I've got like, here's the, the full path to each of these. 
and the brand and the branch that's checked out for each of them. So it's just like a lot easier to kind of manage your same repo that's in very different states and it's going to avoid having like a bunch of different conflicts and stuff like that that from your own copies, you know? It's not you versus you out here. All right? They're protecting you. Back to Maggot. <laughs> Got nerd sniped a little bit there by Git Work Tree. So it's great. Don't be scared of it. Try it out. It's basically just like, it's very similar to if you were to like clone the repo. So hopefully that makes it a little bit less intimidating. Let me show you the alternative. Here, I've got another branch checked out in another work tree. So I've got master checked out in my bubbles directory. And this one, what I can do here is I can actually just do like merge preview. Let's do use lip gloss table. And here it's going to show me all of the changes that were also made. And I can, you know, I can view it the same with the same kind of interface uh, as the, the ranged diff. The only thing here, and correct me if I'm just, if it's a skill issue and I'm just don't know what I'm doing. But the only thing is that with these changes, because uh, master, aka the current checked out branch, um, it's the base branch. So all of these changes are being introduced on like some other branch. So if I hit enter here, it actually is like a locked file. Like I can't make changes to this file based on the fact that this is not, this has happened. Like all these changes have happened in a branch that is not checked out in my current like working directory, if that makes sense. This one slightly less optimal for being able to like modify things. But I'd say if you're just like reviewing it at a, at a high level and you don't feel like, you know, checking out the actual branch or pull request, whatever, and you just want to do a quick little skim locally, pretty good, pretty good. I'd be really curious to know if you have preference between like merge preview or just using a ranged diff with Maggot. Let me know. Maybe I'm missing part of it in my workflow. And I'm definitely just still getting familiar with the Doom Emacs ecosystem, especially Megit. Like I'm just kind of discovering these things as I need, but maybe there's other parts of it that I'm just missing and I haven't, I'm just blissfully unaware of so far. So that's kind of my update on how I've been reviewing pull requests locally and double checking all of my changes, but like for my own pull requests to provide context for people that might be reviewing them so that they know what the major changes are, major considerations that they need to have in mind when they're reviewing my pull request. Let me know if this is helpful for you, if you enjoy this kind of video. Honestly, it's kind of a rhetorical question because uh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to make the videos that I like to make anyway. So if I wanted to make this one, then I want to make this one, you know, but do let me know what you think about this workflow. If you have a different process that you prefer. All right. Let nerds night me about it in the comments. I'm all ears. All right. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for hanging out and supporting my channel. Don't forget to like, and subscribe if you're into nerdy stuff like this. Bye.